I just can't tell you how awesome it is. A long distance call to space, space station cameras capture Hurricane Ida and another successful cargo delivery to the station. A few of the stories to tell you about this week at NASA. Hey guys, you uh, really look good. During a visit to our Johnson Space Center's Christopher Seacraft Junior Mission Control Center, NASA Administrator Bill Nelson, Deputy Administrator Pam Melroy, and several members of Congress talked with the crew aboard the International Space Station about the station's critical role in low Earth orbit. The space station is a really great research platform, so there's lots of instruments outside the space station that are constantly taking data and can take data for years. I just can't tell you how awesome it is to see all of you, uh, just especially uh, the wonderful diversity of the crew. They also touched on the center's work for NASA's Artemis program to build a long-term human presence on and around the moon. And then we're going to Mars, onward and upward. Cameras on the space station captured views of Hurricane Ida as the Category 4 storm neared the southeast Louisiana coast, where it eventually made landfall on August 29th, packing sustained winds of 150 miles per hour. More than one million customers reportedly lost power by midday on August 30th. Ida's landfall came exactly 16 years to the day after historic Hurricane Katrina also hit this region. When Hurricane Ida made landfall on August 29th, the storm affected our Michoud Assembly Facility in New Orleans and Stennis Space Center in Mississippi. No injuries have been reported, but both locations sustained damage. Stennis was able to open for some operations while Michoud was closed with limited access to essential personnel only as teams conducted detailed damage assessments and initial cleanup work. Michoud manufactures and assembles some of the largest parts of NASA's Space Launch System rocket and Orion spacecraft, and Stennis is the agency's premier propulsion test complex. A SpaceX Dragon cargo spacecraft arrived at the International Space Station on August 30th, a day after launching from our Kennedy Space Center. The Dragon delivered more than 4,800 pounds of cargo, including about 2,300 pounds of new science experiments that will look at how microgravity affects plant genetics, robotic assistance, bone tissue, and astronaut vision, among other phenomena. NASA is asking interested American companies for more input about approaches, options, and solutions to providing a lunar terrain vehicle, or LTV. The LTV, similar to the Apollo-era moon buggy, is an unenclosed rover that will transport astronauts wearing spacesuits around the lunar south pole during Artemis exploration surface missions to the moon. The LTV will need to last at least 10 years to span multiple Artemis missions. On September 3rd, Russian cosmonauts Oleg Nevitsky and Pyotr Dubrov of Roscosmos ventured outside the International Space Station on the first of up to 11 spacewalks to prepare the new Nauka multipurpose laboratory module for operations in space. Nauka arrived at the station on July 29th, eight days after launching from the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan. That's what's up this week at NASA. For more on these and other stories, follow us on the web at nasa.gov.